What I want you to be able to teach in August is HyperScore. And um, New Harmony Line is the name of the company. And goal of it is to let anyone create music. I have a 70-year-old neighbor who is going to be my next um, person to try it out. I have a fourth grader this afternoon after we finish. My seven-year-old niece has agreed to try it out. Um, and I've already recorded uh, one of my former students who used the old HyperScore and she's gonna be a junior in high school. So she was so excited to see the update. So this is for anyone. I wanna let you know that I taught um, elementary school for 13 years, general and adaptive music for 13 years. Then I moved to uh, junior high, I taught health class, I taught music, I taught something called flex music where the kids could do anything they want. And I taught a class called Rock Band 101. And I was the multi-tier service support coach for four years. So I've done a lot of different things in the school. So I am your support person when it comes to what to do with this um, program. So please make sure that you're talking to me. My um, email address is cecilia.radabush at newharmonylinemusic.org. And... I provided you with my phone number and my email. And so one of my jobs is to support you. So you can call and talk to me anytime. Email me in the middle of the night and I'll answer the next day. And um, I'm looking forward to um, collaborating with you. I found this, this quote, and I love Pete Seeger anyway from teaching elementary school, but the easiest way to avoid wrong notes is to never open your mouth and sing. And what a mistake that would be. And if our students say, uh, I'm never going to write music because I can't do it, then that's what this program is going to show them that they very well can. So I'm so excited to um, show with you today, share with you today the program. The mission statement of the company is pro providing hyperscore to empower te teachers, children, and adults everywhere to experience the joy of composing original music. I'm gonna say for my junior high classes, you've always got the one or two who hate everything you do, but the majority of my students, I would say in the 90s, thought of this as a great experience. And when they came back in rock band and flex music, they used it again with no problem. So I'm hoping that you will find the same um, with your, your students and, and um, clients and customers. Um, we make composition in three easy steps. You start by composing your rhythms and melodies. And then from your rhythm and melodies, you edit those and then you create harmony and form and choose dynamics. And then they have this really exciting feature called the harmony line. And I was explained it to the students is that when you see color, it's doing something to the music and you don't need to know what it's doing. You just need to know if you like it or not. It's very theoretical, but I love the description. I think this came from June. It creates tension, suspense and resolution. And I do have an example today to show you where I use the harmony line. Nobody has to use it. In fact, if um, you're starting with kindergarten Kim, you might find that you don't use it until they get to fourth or fifth grade. And um, you know, maybe you guys have advanced students in your class. You can always offer that as an opportunity to them because everything is there in the window. You just get to choose. Uh, Peter and I were talking about being able to toggle um, using tools off and on so that say you're working with kindergartners and you only want them to do one thing, you can turn off everything else. And uh, so Peter's that person that I'm going to be talking to you when, when uh, Beth or Jen says, um, I, I don't want them to do this one thing. Can you turn that off or make it so that I can turn it off? And then um, Peter will stay up till midnight, and make sure you have that done. Right, Peter. <laughs> okay. So um what is HyperScore? It's now web-based, which is awesome because I used to have a an entire computer lab in my room because of the um, fact that it was computer-based, but now it's web-based and it's very, very user-friendly with a uh, graphic interface. And you could save your original music um, to the cloud or we're working on some different methods um, that eventually we'll want it to save on its own. And it's, it's, it's for kindergartners and it's for somebody who wants to write symphonies. I was looking at the newharmonyline.org website and Todd has created some amazing things. That symphony orchestra at Toronto 
um, played his piece and it was amazing. And Peter shared that uh, something, what was it? Headless chicken, Peter? One of us. That the dance of the headless chicken was one of our example pieces from the toy symphony in the early 2000s. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and it was just incredible. And you said oh, a kid made that. That was awesome. So it's it's sophisticated enough for your for for your advanced students as well. You could teach the fundamentals if you want to, Kim. Um, I'm really hoping that the way I've set this up, which is how I would teach it to review with my junior high students is gonna be how you're teaching it to your elementary students. And um, you can, it's not just that you're writing music, but you're also telling a story. When I was filming my um, student who's gonna be a junior high this year, she said one just fabulous thing as she was using it and talking to me about it, she said, I always wanna connect with someone when I write my piece of music. And she said, I can see how I'm telling a story with what I'm writing, and then that'll connect with my listener. So hopefully you have the same thing. Uh, June has this wonderful idea that I want to flesh out, make a module for about talking about climate change. And so I was thinking like uh, you could have kids write what spring sounds like to them. You could have kids write what summer sounds like to them, fall and winter. And then you put that together and create a form. And then what happens if our earth doesn't have the spring, summer, fall and winter? So then you um, can go tell a story through the meaning um, that you ask the kids to um, put into their pieces. And um, I want to hundred percent make sure that you know that you hit a button and you can export it into, into traditional notation. So I know that Iowa City Schools is very much into ORF instruments. And so they can be, uh, you know, creating four part harmonies and then uh, playing that on the ORF instrument. So you can transcribe into notation if that's something you want to do. And Kim, you can also use this program and never use notation at all. The kids that I had in my class did not consider themselves musicians. That's why they were in my class. So I use a number system instead of note names. And I never put music on the staff unless the kid was a piano player and wanted music on the staff. So Kim, you're gonna be able to use this even though um, it, technically you're not teaching music. Um, it'll, it'll be done in a way if they can count to three, they're, they're good to go. So, okay. Um, this is a completed sketch window, everybody. And what I absolutely love about it is the bright colors on the screen, but I got to choose those bright colors because Peter did something wonderful where you get to choose how your screen looks. And um, that's coming up. I'll show you how you're gonna get to choose that in just a little bit. Um, I have created melodies here. I have three melody windows, blue, red, and orange are melodies. Again, the um, drum part will be coming. I would usually start with the drum part, but don't worry, it's coming. I have two other melodies over here, but what I wanted to show you something cool about the melodies, I realized you couldn't see on the screen, is that Peter is now created so that you can see the tone color and the time signature. So I think that's so cool because um, I really reinforced with my students time signature and they didn't have to understand what four and over four meant. I didn't ever care if they understood that. They just need to understand that they're moving in groups of four. So you can teach time signatures with this. The, um, he's made a library of tone colors. So I made this window a trumpet and I made this a kettle drum or a timpani. And then some cool features um, up in the harmony window up here is I've actually now put together in this sketch window, which is this tool right here, I have put together some harmonies. So the definition, the kid friendly definition we used in my class was two or more notes heard at the same time. So I've got my red window, my blue window and my orange window playing at the same time. So this qualifies as harmony. And then um, I put some form into my piece. So if you teach form, you can show introduction and then this is my section A. And what I love about this is I 100% consider myself to be a visual learner. And so this is very visual that I've got a section A that's got blue, red and orange in it. Then I also have a bridge. It could be called a section B, but I'm using my yellow 
which is different from what I've seen over here. And then I have a, an exact repeat of the A section. I could have made it a, a, a variation by making it higher or lower or changing some of the instruments. But for, for ease, I just did a repeat of the A section. And then my green became the coda. And of course, it sounds like a dun, 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 dun. That's for the end of my piece of music. And even at, wait, you think you're done, but then even more is these harmony buttons. These have been a, a feature of the program the whole time. You can have it with none. It sounds exactly like you wrote it. Whatever things you put and stack together are exactly like you wrote it. With general, you can clean up some of the dissonance. And um, that's, that's, I explained to my students, if you're listening to it and you don't like it, it's probably because there's some dissonance in it. And so um, it cleans up a little bit of the dissonance, but it still sounds like you. And with the classical, it cleans up a lot of the dissonance. So you sound a lot more like Mozart, but you created the piece. It just cleans up a lot of the dissonance. So I have students literally that would choose. I want it to sound just like I wrote it. And I, I, I had some choose general and I had some say, I don't want to listen to it unless it's in classical mode. So that's a cool feature of the program that, that um, um, he's done. Also, you have tempo up here so you can make yours go faster or slower as you wish. And then I just want to show you real quick a little um, feature screen. This is uh, part of the help feature in Hyperscore and um, Peter's just showing you things like you have a melody window, percussion, you have a library of sounds, the sketch window you make your harmonies in. I especially love what Peter did with the instrument sounds, the fact that the visual is there on the screen. Um, I, I was talking to somebody who teaches ELL in English language learners. And so Peter and I are talking about a way to potentially put the English word viola in there or the English word piano so that the students are seeing that. We have volume and tempo control and it looks like just the volume slide that you would see on um, anybody's screen today. Kids will all understand that's volume. Um, the harmony line, which can add that tension, suspension and resolution. And then they have a polyphonic mode and Peter and June and Athena and I were talking last week at the staff meeting when uh, I'm, I'm teaching the younger kids, I want them to do monophonic work. But um, when I get in the upper grades, um, I definitely polyphonic works. And somebody who's played piano is going to understand polyphonic, having more than one note occur at the same time. And then um, the, the motive loop visual feedback is an awesome feature in the sketch window. This is one entire phrase of my piece of music, but it's played three times here. So I'll be sharing more about that with you. Again, um, this is something brand new that you can work on time signatures. And I default in my classes or did default to groups of four. Um, I always call it common time because it's, it's most of the music that kids listen to on the radio is in groups of four. So, um, but I, I love the fact that Peter put in that you could do two, three, four, six, eight, um, just so that you have other opportunities to teach. This is a way to teach um, meter. And then um, you can erase anything. And he has edit undo that goes back quite a few steps. So we can use the scissors to edit. And then um, we can also use the edit undo button. And then there's a built in um, documentation screen so that if you're saying, uh, how do I do this one thing? Um, we'll be working on updating it so it looks like the new hyperscore. So there's some wonderful features here. Does anybody have any questions at this point about what you're seeing on the screen? Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. All right. So the great thing about uh, if you're a music teacher using it is it's the best way. This is where I said it was my missing link for my class. Rhythm, melody, harmony, dynamics, form, tone, color. You can probably even find things that I didn't even think of, but these were the main things we focused on in my seventh grade music technology class. And so reinforcing the tools of music is an excellent way to use it. And I'm just gonna real quick share a few seconds of some, what I call my forever pieces. It's ones that my students created. And then I have one um, from Todd with the Toronto's, I think 
Peter and June, correct me if I'm incorrect. I think this is the Toronto Symphony here that I'm going to share. But um, this is my student who won the pilot contest and had his piece played at Hunter Auditorium. So if you can envision um, those of you from Iowa City that his piece was up on the screen playing while the Ying Quartet played his music and violin, viola, cello, string bass. It was amazing, but this is his piece letting off some steam. So I'm gonna play just a little bit of this for you. Where I'm playing a video of it. And I just love that so much. And the great thing was um, that. Uh, he was getting to see it played and we were all hearing it, but we were also seeing it at the same time. So I found <laughs> an entire symphony playing somebody's piece it, it's it's probably doesn't matter other than to recognize the wonder that is this orchestra is performing a piece that somebody made and we're seeing the piece up on the screen i wanted to show you um pew 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 um, this student um created a piece and their whole goal was to make as many little pieces as they could in the three days they had to compose and um and then make it go fast Okay, so this is pew pew pew. And I'm going to tell you, they had so much fun doing that. And it ended up that I really liked the 16th note pattern. I'm going to fast forward to the beginning. I thought this was so clever. I mean, a traditional ending. They stuck that in the piece because they wanted to sound like it was done. Um, this one right here, I especially love because they. Um, this is called This is Sparta. And I'm currently trying to find this student so that um, I can get permission from him to um, have this on the website. He did three days of composing and then he put in the harmony book. the tension. This is a suspension, so creating suspense right here. Here's his normal, and then he's back to the dramatic part. Not. Okay, so this is part it is the most sophisticated piece I ever had a student write, and it lasts about three minutes. Um, but my favorite piece will forever be Untitled Rondelette. This is the one I showed my students. And then they said, let me have it. She put in a bridge. She didn't even know what that was. Oh, she's got a B section. She didn't even know what that was. Okay, here's our C section. Or section C, as I always try to say. And a little sound effect at the end. So um, this is this is an example of something seventh graders have written. But I'm going to tell you that I the fifth grader across the street who's going to do the program for me, he's ready to do some sophisticated things, and my niece is going to just learn how to drop stuff on the screen as a seven year old. So lots and lots of cool things to look forward to um, with your students.